Okay guys, we're gonna show you Crib Mound. Hope I don't crash again. Take off. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. Okay guys, this is Crib Mound here. They sunk these barges over the Indian Mound. If you go to YouTube and look at Art Gerber, search YouTube for Art Gerber and you will find all kinds of information. Crib Mound is what it was called. There's Art Gerber in front of his cache of preformed blanks that came out of Crib Mound there. They came, they're Harrison County Flint. They came out of Harrison County, Indiana, which is 100 miles away. Here they're digging them out. And those go for $300 right now on eBay if you go searching for them. So that's quite a pile of money there. Here they first discovered them. There was 10,000 of them there. And here's a close-up of what they look like. Um, they're like 80 to 90% complete. And I believe they used them as money. The Indians actually used them as money as a currency. Here, look at all the shells on the beach here. You will see that you always find oysters over there too. But here's an aerial view of it. To the right, you'll see Anders. Here is the obine, the Coast Guard Cutter obine. That's who puts your buoys out in the river. I want you to notice the buoys on the left are red. The buoys on the right are black. I forget, it was in the 70s they changed to green from black. But they used to be red and black, not red and green. So, also look at the top of the can buoys. So the Coast Guard was sifting through the human bones looking to find treasure also. Here's a um, local artifact show showing me effigy pipes that he found. He found lots of effigy idols in the mound. Here's a original 1950-something picture, black and white, but notice all the white oyster shells. It's before they put the barges on top of the, the mound. And if you go to, he used to show his collection at the local artifact shows. Here's a picture of all the mounds up and down the. So he found some copper knives. Now that's a work of art, a copper knife. We got all kinds of hairpins made out of bone. We got fish hooks. He found tons of fish hooks, tons of different effigy pipes drills, hairpins made out of bone. But what I think is the most beautiful thing out of the mound was this copper medallion. There's always people here digging, always. And you gotta be very careful, look. Old barge right there. But every time you... And look. What do we got right there? We got us people looking for arrowheads. Thank <laughs> you. 
Art Gerber became a millionaire off this spot. Oh, look. Here we got us another guy. In here, digging around. What's he carrying? Yep, he just got him something. Yep, got him another arrowhead. A lot of times you come here and you see people with shovels digging, which is illegal. Because this was an Indian mound at one time. It's called Crib Mound. Crib Mound was a shell mound that contained a major mid to late archaic period. The site has been largely destroyed over the past few decades as a result of artifact collecting and blatant loot looting. A neighbor of Art Gerber told me that he would be down there every day with a fire hose blasting away the bank and the bodies, the skulls and the bones would come rolling out and he'd throw those in the river. And So if you do a Google search, you'll find all kinds of his stuff for sale. He became a millionaire off this mound. And he recently died about six months ago. I got to meet him before he died. And I believe his wife sold what was left of his collection for way over a million dollars. It was named Crib Mound because there was a corn crib that was built on top of the mound that people didn't realize that it was actually an Indian burial mound. And when the Ohio River would flood... The corn crib would be the only thing in the surrounding area that wasn't underwater. There are several other mounds in the surrounding area that is known as Corn Island. And if you watch later on, I'll scan down to Corn Island and you'll see there's a major shipyard there. The lower section of the mound was com composed of shell. Now, right over, I believe it's right over here, there's still a Hopewell burial ground that were laid down by the archaic peoples. And the shells. The calcium in the shells actually preserved much of the much of the stuff. Then there was a layer of black humus, which was built on top of that by the Woodlands Indians, and contains burials from that culture. There was an extensive Indian village at this site, both upriver and downriver from the mound. So these weren't your usual, typical corn cribs. They were actually a huge corn crib. Before tractors, when farmers would have to fill the corn cribs by hand, and the plows were pulled by horses. In the topmost portion of the mound, were stone encased, and were accompanied by copper ornaments and implements. A copper spear, copper knives, 
Gerberitz. Art Gerber had a nickname, Indiana Gerber. And it was a nickname off of Indiana Jones. And when I got to meet the man, he dr actually dressed like Indiana Jones. This mound made him quite famous. And of course, he became a millionaire off digging the Indian artifacts out of the burial mound. Can't believe they don't see or hear me. Let's come down in altitude a little bit. I mean, geez, I'm 40 feet off the ground. Oh, they finally saw me. <laughs> oh, they're flipping me off. What I'm trying to go show you guys is there's a couple more mounds. Okay. There's the shipyard. Okay. There's a Hopewell beehive mound right there. That's why there's trees. In the middle of a field when you see trees like that. And that one hasn't been touched. And this is the old road that they used to use to come down to the crib right here. That's what's grown up in trees. Right there. And here there's this ditch that goes all around it, and it's a swamp. And this is what protected the crib mound that the Indians used as their natural moat right here. That's one of the reasons crib mound is here. Would you want to swim in that right there? It totally surrounded their village.
I mean, is this people in here digging or is this a true crop circle? Look at that. When I met Art Gerber, he was trying to get me to buy his book, and in hindsight, I wish I would have, but he wanted $100 for it, and he said he'd even sign it for me. Now, in hindsight, I wish I would have, now upon his death, um, I see those books are going for over $300 on eBay currently. But anyways, if you see these barges right here, they sunk these old barges on top of the mound site to keep people from digging it. And the more they dug, the more the bank eroded and the farmers' cornfields are ending up in the Ohio River. But every time I've been to this mound, you will find there will be people up along the bank digging further. Some of this stuff, like a fish hook, you can get thousands of dollars for a fish hook or tomahawks. Then later on, he started excavating a site on the GE site, and he got charged with a felony crime because he carried this stuff across state lines. These Hopewell Indians were farmers and they had collective thought. In other words, they spent, they had time because they were farmers. They weren't constantly hunting and gathering. They raised tobacco. They raised a form of tobacco called nicotinia, which was 10 times stronger than today's tobacco. And it's theorized they were the first drug lords. They were a drug lord on the Ohio River and they would trade their tobacco to other tribes going up and down the river and they trade it for beaver hides and so forth to stay warm. So the Hopewell people were also slave owners. Most of their mounds were built by slaves and Art found several sacrificial knives that they used because of the curvature of it for their human sacrifices. They were from the Archaic period, and they added banner stones to their atolals. The hole that he found, all the preformed blanks in, he describes it as 16 feet across and 14 feet deep, and it contained the 10,000 preformed blanks. Whoa, I had to hand catch you. <laughs>